evaporation and vapor pressure. Evaporation is important to our planet and our bodies. A significant portion of the sun's rays and energy is used to evaporate water in the oceans, lakes, rivers, and streams. And also evaporation is crucial to our body's temperature maintenance systems. First of all, let's define what the idea of vapor. Like most of us may use the word vapor, but vapor is a term customarily used for gas, the gaseous state of substance that would normally exist as a liquid or solid at one atmosphere. For example, the water molecule is normally liquid, so we refer to water as being a vapor when it's in the gaseous state. Uh, first of all, we've got two, two flasks here. The first flask represents what happens. You put water into a flask. You put a stopper on it so you have a closed system. Well, the up arrow represents, so after you put the water in, water begins to evaporate. The up arrow represents evaporation. Well, after a period of time, the water that is evaporated become vapor also starts to condense. And then the last thing that happens, the vaporization, the rate of vaporization, equals the rate at which the, the vapor goes into liquid, which is what we call condensation. So we call that equilibrium vapor pressure. So I have that on the bottom. Equilibrium vapor pressure is when the liquid that is evaporating is equal to the gas that is condensing. And the, those two rates are equal. So and also one thing you also want to say here is that evaporation and vaporization actually mean the same term. Evaporation and vaporization is when a liquid goes into a gas and, it, it, and that process occurs at a temperature that's below boiling. So let's look at these two curves here. What do they represent? Well, we see it on the x-axis, we have kinetic energy. We know kinetic energy is the same as temperature. Now, actually, if you look, the kinetic energy of the second graph, the average, which we call the, the middle of the hump, the T2 is higher than T1. So actually, the second graph, which we see right here, is at a higher temperature. So since that, that is at a higher temperature, we'd say that has more kinetic energy. So the higher temperature means there's more kinetic energy. So what, what, is that, what implications does that have on vaporization or vapor pressure? Well, what happens? Molecules, in order to become a vapor, they have to overcome intermolecular forces. Like in water, there's a water molecule and here's a water molecule. There's a hydrogen bond between those two molecules. So that intermolecular force or that hydrogen bond in water must be overcome. So if, more, if molecules have more kinetic energy, they, it's going to be easier for them to overcome and break that hydrogen bond and let that liquid become a vapor. So the, this shows us that at higher temperatures, more molecules, you see the shaded portion here, have the kinetic energy they need to overcome and go from a liquid to a gaseous state where they're separate. And also we see here kinetic energy is equal is refers to temperature. And so when you're increasing the temperature, you're increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules. So what is boiling? Well, boiling is defined as when the vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to the vapor pressure surrounding the liquid, or what we call the atmospheric pressure. Now, the normal boiling point is a boiling point at which any liquid boils at one atmosphere. Now, I'll notice this would also be 760 millimeters of mercury, 760 torr, and 101.3 kPa or just what we call standard conditions. So one thing we'll look at is what is the difference between evaporation versus boiling? Well, first of all is the temperature. Evaporation occurs below the boiling point, and boiling occurs at the boiling point. Then where? Where does evaporation occur? Well, evaporation only occurs on the surface, whereas boiling occurs throughout the entire liquid. And then we say, which molecules? Well, when you talk about evaporation, only the molecules are moving fast, evaporate. If I go back to the previous slide for just a second, we see on this slide we have a variation in kinetic energy. And if you have something at room temperature, only a few have the kinetic energy they need to escape. And so if you go back to this slide we're talking about, so the molecules that evaporate are only the ones with high kinetic energy. Whereas in boiling, almost all the molecules, because they're at very high temperature, have the kinetic energy they need to evaporate. The next thing is energy. What does evaporation and boiling have to do with energy? Well, for both of these, they're endothermic processes. What that means is if we put energy into solid or liquid water, that energy will be used to help break the bond and form gaseous water. So both of those processes, evaporation and both boiling, are endothermic processes. Now, a couple of little bits of information. One about evaporation. Evaporation actually is the important process we use to cool our bodies. And so 
what happens, the reason you feel cool after you get out of the pool, that's why I have all the swimmers there, is that the, the cool molecules are left behind and the warmer molecules are left, and that's part of the cooling process that we feel when we, when we have water on our body. The other thing I like to add for boiling is that when you look at boiling, we see bubbles in there, and there's bubbles throughout that. People mistakenly think those bubbles are air. When water boils, the bubbles are actually water vapor or water gas. So all those little circles, all those bubbles that you see in the boiling liquid are actually water vapor. So here's a chart that, that looks at the relationship between pressure and temperature. And we look at, this is specifically water. So as we increase the temperature of water, the pressure increases. Why is that? Well, when you take the liquid, which you have here, here's a liquid, and you add energy, that's what increasing the temperature does, you get more particles as a gas. So the liquid evaporates, and then the process of the, of the gas condensing going the other way is actually an exothermic process. The liquid absorbing energy and going this to the right is evaporation is endothermic. So remember, going to the right is an evaporation is endothermic, whereas if something condenses and goes the other direction, when it goes to the left, that is an exothermic process. So now why, why is this that this occurs? Well, we see that as temperature increases, more molecules, why is there so much more pressure? Well, as temperature increases, there's going to be more molecules that are becoming gas. That's why I made the gas really big here. So as you have more and more molecules getting more and more energy, you've got more and more gas. If there's more and more gas, there's going to be more collisions. More collisions means more pressure. And also, we go back to the second curve. If I showed, that, showed you that again, we see when there's a curve of the temperature, I'll just sort of draw one right here. As you increase temperature, let's say this is a minimum, the curve keeps changing, and you have more molecules that have that minimum amount of energy they need to uh, go from a liquid to a gas. Boiling point and pressure. We've got a mountain here. Why would we have a mountain? Well, the reason we have a mountain is because when you're at the bottom of a mountain or at the top of a mountain, there are different pressures. At the bottom of the mountain, there is a high pressure. Now, that high pressure, we're going to represent, just for the sake of this discussion, say that that's exactly sea level. And so at the bottom of the mountain, we have sea level pressure. We have one atmosphere pressure. At the top of the mountain, we represent this, we have a little stick figure up here at the top, that represents a low atmospheric pressure. So what that means, there's less pressure at pushing down in all directions when you're at the top of the mountain. So what does that mean to boiling point? Remember we define boiling point as boiling point is when the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the external pressure surrounding the liquid. So if you're at the top of the mountain, the boiling point is actually lower. If you're at the bottom of the mountain, the boiling point's actually higher. So here we have the bottom. So we say the bottom, or just for the sake of discussion, we say it's one atmosphere. The boiling point is going to say the normal boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. At the top, we know the pressure is less than 100 degrees Celsius, or the, the pressure is less than 1 atm. And so the boiling point is less than 100 degrees Celsius. So what implication would that have if you try to cook something? Well, if you cook something at the top of the mountain, it should actually take longer because you're cooking at a lower temperature than you would be at the bottom of the mountain when water's boiling. So let's say water boils at 92 degrees Celsius instead of 100. You're, you're actually trying to cook at a lower temperature, and so it's going to take longer. And the last graph here is looking at the, at the idea of vapor pressure and temperature. Evaporation and vapor pressure. So first we want to define a word volatile. Volatile means something's evaporates very easily. So a liquid with high va vapor pressure evaporates really easily. So we have three liquids here. The first one is water. The second one is ethyl alcohol or ethanol. And the last one is diethyl ether. Now the one that evaporates the easiest is one that is going to be the one with the highest vapor pressure. And then it's actually diethyl ether. Now we can see that on the graph because if we take the normal boiling point, which is at one atmosphere, it, it's going to have the most molecules or, that are going to be in the vapor phase, and so it's got the highest vapor pressure. Next would be ethanol, and next would be water. Now, why is diethyl ether the lowest? Well, it's because it has the weakest intermolecular force. Here is a molecule of diethyl ether. Now, notice it's got oxygen and hydrogen, but the hydrogen is not attached to the oxygen, so this just has what we call mostly dipole-dipole forces, which is an uh, intermolecular force that is is relatively weak compared to covalent bonding. Next, we look at ethanol. 
Now, ethanol does have hydrogen bonding on one end. That's pretty strong. But the other part of the molecule just has weak London dispersion forces. So ethanol is a mix, partly hydrogen bonding, partly London dispersion. So because of that, ethanol is stronger than diethyl ether, but, uh, but weaker than water. Then, of course, we get to water. Water has the strongest intermolecular force, thus the lowest vapor pressure, because it's a, the hydrogen bond between water molecules exists throughout the water molecule, and it's the most difficult to break. So we see at the normal boiling point, you're going to have the most molecules of diethyl ether in the vapor, fray, uh, vapor phase, and so you're going to have the highest vapor pressure. On the other hand, water, which has the strongest intramolecular force, we see water here, at 100, you'd have to go to 100 degrees Celsius to have an equal number of particles in the vapor phase. So what you want to do for this graph is look at, for example, at one temperature. Let's say we look at like uh, 80 degrees. At 80 degrees, all of the, only this much of water is, is in the vapor phase. But, a, uh, but it, you go follow that same temperature up, a great proportion of the ethyl alcohol is in the vapor phase, and every single bit of the diethyl ether is in the vapor phase. So we can see from that one temperature that water has the highest, has the lowest pressure because it's got the weakest, uh, the strongest intermolecular force. Next is ethyl alcohol, and next the weakest intermolecular force is diethyl ether. So this is different from the other things we've talked about. The stronger the intermolecular force. The, the lower the vapor pressure because molecules have a hard time breaking that bond and going into the vapor phase. So that concludes our discussion a love chemistry. I love chemistry. I love chemistry. <laughs>